that was fighting for gay rights mm -hmm. and people were killed. Nobody they were killed at Stonewall. Nobody was no killed. Way. The concept of an all-star season has been a part of reality TV for a couple decades now. Because having a bunch of fan favorite contestants return again to battle it out tends to be super exciting. So when it came time for RuPaul's Drag Race to expand their franchise, it seemed like an all-star season was the obvious next step in their journey. So it's time we talked about what is to many fans the worst season of RuPaul's Drag Race, which is All-Stars 1. But before we start, this video is sponsored by Atlas VPN. Atlas VPN has more than 6 million users worldwide who are able to go on the internet knowing that all of their information is being kept both private and secure. I've actually used many different types of VPNs throughout the years and I can honestly say that Atlas is one of the most affordable while also providing a great service to its users. If you're watching this video, you're probably someone who's always on the internet. And just like real life, you have to make sure that you're keeping yourself safe when online. So it's really important that you have a service like Atlas. VPN that's super affordable to protect yourself from harmful viruses or hackers who may be trying to steal your information. One of the best features from Atlas VPN is that you can switch your location to any country in the world, allowing you to enjoy exclusive content that would otherwise not be available in your region. You'll also be able to use Atlas VPN across any of your devices with just a single subscription. I personally have gotten to see so many TV shows that I would have otherwise never heard about had it not been for using the VPN. And Considering we're in the digital age, it's better to be safe than sorry. Now perhaps the most helpful feature of this VPN service is that it helps you save a lot of money. And if you have an unhealthy online shopping addiction like me, then I think this can probably help you just as much as it helped me. You won't ever have to worry about getting a potential virus in your electronics because Atlas VPN blocks malicious links, ads, and trackers, notifying you immediately when someone is trying to steal your data. If you're someone who doesn't have a VPN and is considering to get one, one, this is the time for you to actually experience why so many people use VPN. Right now, Atlas VPN is running a huge discount, which means you can get a subscription for just $1.70 a month. Plus, your first six months are completely free. Time is going to run out soon, so get your deal by clicking the link in the video description below. Now, let's begin. In early 2012, World of Wonder received the approval to make All Stars 1, which would end up being publicly announced during the airing of Season 4. As mentioned in previous previous videos, Logo TV created voting polls where fans were able to express who out of the four seasons worth of queens they would like to see on TV again. Naturally, the queens that ended up getting cast was mostly comprised of either runner-ups like Nina Flowers, Raven, Manila Luzon, and Chad Michaels, as well as Miss Congenialities like Pandora Box, Yara Sofia, or Latrice Royale. There was also a couple wild cards like Tammy Brown and Mimi on first, who were rumored to have replaced two queens that needed to drop out last minute, which was Jeremy Carey aka Fifi O'Hara who was not able to film due to not being able to clear his background check and Willem who was told he no longer had a storyline potential just two days before filming. Every queen knew going into this season that it would be only six episodes long. What they didn't know was that there would be a total of 12 contestants forced to compete in pairs and endure some of the weirdest challenges that Drag Race had created so far. One of the biggest contenders of the season was of course Chad Michaels. Within the drag community Chad Chad Michaels was considered to be a legend. She even had a close working relationship with Chanel that would be showcased when they competed together as paired. Chad was actually asked by producers of Jag Race to audition for a chance to compete on season one, but Chad ended up deciding not to since at the time he felt kind of weary about what to expect from reality TV. But after the season began to air, Chad realized that he also wanted to showcase his drag to the world and compete in the fun challenges, along with serve up some sickening runway looks. I'm a delicious Miss Mandarin. <gasps> mm. He subsequently auditioned for season 2 and 3 until finally getting on season 4. There was also a strong feeling that Chad deserved to win Drag Race because he had put in a lot of work into the community for many years, which is a big reason why some fans felt that she should have won season 4. Along with that, Chad had 20 years of experience within the drag community, so a stamp of approval from RuPaul is all that would be needed to give her the flowers she deserved. Now, as we know, one of Chad Michaels' main storylines on All Stars 1 was her excessive need to make references to The Hunger Games, which at the time had just released their first film and was sort of a hot topic within pop culture. Happy Hunger Games, bitches! This is The Hunger Games, darling. It surely is. Twelve tribute center, one leaves. <laughs> May the odds be ever in your favor, oh. darling. Ever in your favor. 
Yet, I don't think anyone could have predicted how much Chad found herself identified within Katniss Everdeen. Because even months after filming had concluded, she was still at red carpet events to let us know how much she stands The Hunger Games. And rightfully so. This is just like The Hunger Games. This is like the second book, Catching Fire. This is the quarter quell of drag. This is all the victors coming back one more time. You know, 12 girls enter, one girl leaves. I've got an arrow for every one of you bitches, so let's do this. When the twist of having the queens compete in pairs was announced to the public, everyone was pretty disappointed with the way the show had decided to do the season. It's strange to think that there was some twink at the World of Wonder office that was like, you know what would be a good idea? Having queens compete in pairs. Regardless, even when we accept the twist for what it is, we are left with the competition where most of the time as a viewer, you couldn't really tell all that much what was going on. Challenges seemed to be so random and critiques tended to not make sense at all. But we did get this moment of Rue burning Michelle Visage, so... This would have been seduction, and I'd be the one, little Katie in the middle, because I was the youngest. <laughs> and, uh... That's funny, tell another one! <laughs> Aside from that, there was also that one episode that I guess was a mixture between a makeover and performance challenge, because the three remaining pairs of queens had to make over one of the guests. Only for Raven and Jujube to get the only girl that didn't want to have any heavy makeup done to her face. Which of course was the downfall of the team. Chad Michaels ended up responding to the negative criticism that had been made about All Stars 1, saying that the fact of the matter is that nobody in the cast liked the twist to compete in pair, including himself. But they ended up making do with what they got. And thankfully, Chad was able to last until the end of the competition and ultimately win the crown, $100,000, and a legacy that solidified her as the first ever inductee into the Drag Race Hall of Fame. Although, despite being a winner, Chad has said that he has no intentions of ever returning for an all-winner season. But perhaps Mother Dust will change her mind if producers tell her that they got Cher as a guest judge. Speaking of Cher, Chad ended up making a series for World of Wonder where she impersonates Cher and pretends to read off some of her tweets. For a while, I thought that Cher had never met Chad. But not only do they have a picture together, but Cher ended up seeing Chad perform live and teared up while watching her. It surprises me that Cher still hasn't been a judge on RuPaul's Drag Race, despite the fact that her son and mother both got on the show in season 6. And they even made Cher the Rusical for season 10. Now, as many of you already know, Sahara Davenport from season 2 and Manila Lu on from season 3 were known to have dated while each of them competed on their respective seasons. Shortly after All Stars 1 concluded filming in the early summer of 2012, it would be announced in early October that Sahara Davenport had passed away due to some health problems she had been experiencing, becoming the first death related to a RuPaul's Drag Race contestant. Kennedy Davenport had a close friendship with Sahara and revealed in season 7 that she always felt guilty because at the time, she was living in a different state than Sahara and could not afford to travel to pay respects at the funeral. All Stars 1 premiered just a couple weeks after Sahara Davenport passed away, so RuPaul dedicated the first episode of the season in memory of Sahara Davenport. Now, Manila Luzon's run alongside Latrice Royale was really unfortunate to watch, because they were both such likable queens at the time and you really just wanted them both to succeed. Also, side note, I think that Latrice's lip sync against Tammy Brown is super impressive and doesn't get talked about nearly as much as it should. But to symbolize their elimination, Manila and Latrice released a music video for their song, The Chop. As you know, each pair of queens was given a team name that was based on mixing the names of the two queens, such as Tammy Brown and Nina Flowers becoming Brown Flowers. According to Pandora Box, the queens had no power on which name their team would end up getting, which is why she ended up with Team Mandora. On episode 1 of Untucked, Raven, Latrice, Jujubee, and Manila spoke about how they felt that Mimi didn't deserve to be there, because any other Rue girl deserved the spot more. Willem was also a guest for this episode of Untucked 
tucked. I imagine how relieved Willem must have been in this moment, realizing that she had dodged a huge bullet by not being on the season. But in retrospective, it would have been better than nothing since she sort of blacklisted from the show. Also, I know that Willem sometimes lurks this channel, so Willem, if you're watching this, please sign my copy of your book Suck Less. Anyway, even though Willem will never be on a season hosted by RuPaul again, I'd be curious to see if she could return to compete on an international franchise like Canada vs. the World that isn't hosted by Ru. But Willem also says that he no longer has an interest in competing, so who knows? In regards to how the competition would end up panning out, naturally, the queen that had the worst reputation out of the whole cast was Mimi on first, largely due to the way she came across on season 3. Mimi was a well-established queen in New York City that was one of the main figures within the drag community there. But everything changed when she got on RuPaul's Drag Race. Suddenly, everyone was very turned off by the person they saw on TV. And due to Mimi not having that many fans, she was sort of brushed aside. Mimi on first being cast on All Stars 1 added some shock value, especially to the other queens of the workroom who were comprised of either fan favorites or queens that had made it far during their season. When I first watched All Stars 1, I was excited to see some kind of redemption storyline for her, but it never came to fruition. Mimi on first would be paired together with Pandora Box, which Pandora took as a death sentence and instant guarantee that she was going to be eliminated very soon. The reason this happened is because Pandora was defeated from the get-go, because of how dissatisfied she was with the pairing. When it came to the fan base, Mimi on first was one of the most disliked queens out of the four seasons of Drag Race that had been released, because to many, she came across as sort of obnoxious while she was on her season. And the infamous moment where she picked up India Farah in the lip sync was sort of the cherry on top, since it seemed that even RuPaul was kind of done with her shenanigans. After the airing of season 3, Mimi ended up losing a lot of her gigs because she was so disliked by the fans that club promoters felt turned off by her. So, in a way, All Stars 1 was her chance to change the narrative that the fans had of her. Yet things only got worse when the rest of the cast ended up piling up on Mimi. The ambush of Mimi on first started off with a critique made by the judges while on the main stage. Mimi's outfit had been critiqued for being too clownish, with Santino Rice asking Mimi if she even felt sexy wearing the dress. Later on in Untucked, the queens were all reading Santino, when all of a sudden, Mimi had taken off her dress to reveal an underwhelming dress under it, to which Yara Sophia called out saying that Mimi shouldn't be changing herself for the judges because it proves that she's letting them get to her. Then of course, there was the drama with Alexis Mateo, where according to them, Alexis had been working at a bar, but lost the position after the club owner had offered it to Mimi on first. Mimi felt that it was unfair for the queens to come for her because anyone else would have taken an opportunity that was offered to them. Although Mimi does say that she had no idea that Alexis Mateo would be out of the show as a consequence. Out of frustration, Mimi ended up retreating to the parking lot where she walked in heels all the way back to New York City. Well, not really. Pandora ended up chasing after her, gave her a pep talk, and Mimi came back to set. The moment they were placed in the bottom two, Pandora accepted that there was no way her and Mimi would be able to stay, accepting the fate before it even became a reality. Along with that, she didn't bother lip syncing because she wanted to provide Mimi with a chance to redeem herself from her lip sync against India. Now, Mimi did do a decent job in the lip sync, but ended up getting eliminated, to no one's surprise. And honestly, while Mimi ended up going home first and not really being able to prove herself to the fans, I do think that her time on All Stars 1 did help garner her more sympathy from the fans at the time, which came at the expense of Pandora Box. I think that at the time, Pandora Box was one of the most negatively affected queens from the franchise because her storyline in All Stars 1 would have the newer fans of the show sort of not really liking her because she didn't portray herself in the best light. Pandora would end up backtracking on the edit that was shown on TV, citing that while she was upset during her time on All Stars 1, it wasn't entirely from being paired with Mimi on first. Part of it was because she had gotten really sick and was having a hard time even eating solid food, so she was worried the whole time that she'd end up pulling a Willem and vomiting on the runway. The reality is that Pandora had been an underdog on season 2, but went on to be one of the more successful queens from the franchise, only to come back for All Stars and once again be put into the underdog box. So, I'm glad she was able to return for All Stars 6 and be an underdog again for the new generation of fans. While All Stars 1 turned out to be a disappointment, one thing that it did give us was non-stop iconic moments in Untucked. I mean, it's in Untucked that we really 
got to see just how catty this cast was, with even Tammy Brown spicing things up in the room. But I'd say that only the first couple episodes of All Stars 1 Untucked are the true masterpieces, because as more and more queens get eliminated, there begins to be more and more space for Chad Michaels to live out his Hunger Games fantasy. You just won Drag Race All Star. I did. You really manifested it. You, 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 you listeners of us, Miss Katniss, riding to the wind, and you did it. You did it. Yeah, it worked. I guess it's a. Uh... I'm a method actor, I visualize and make it happen. Now, once the finale of All Stars 1 officially aired, Raven would end up being the one to crown Chad Michaels, which was coincidentally the closest she ever got to having a crown. Since after this, Raven did not compete on All Stars again, presumably since she's now RuPaul's makeup artist. In the years that followed All Stars 1, there was a lot of debate in the fan base as to whether Chad should actually be considered a winner that is equal to those that had won regular seasons of Drag Race. Some of the reasons was because All Stars was a separate franchise from the main series of the show. Not only that, but it was considered one of the worst seasons thus far. But the production of the show made sure to include Chad Michaels whenever they needed the winners to be represented. Nowadays, it's completely normal for All Star winners to be considered equal to main season winners. But I'm curious as to what you guys think, so let me know in the comments. There's been an ongoing theory that All Stars was made entirely for Chad Michaels to win. And regardless of whether or not that's true, the fact that it ended up giving us this quote is iconic. Chat about to die. So are you probably... <laughs> so Rue probably wanted him to be happy. <laughs> The reality of this season is hard to grasp at times. It was really weird seeing strong contenders like Manila Luzon or Nina Flowers go home so early after their performance on some really questionable challenges. The significance of All Stars 1 is that it was a prototype to see if an All Stars franchise could actually be a hit within the fan base, Which it sort of did in a way. I mean, yeah, everyone was rightfully pissed off about the terrible decision making made by the production of the show, but it was really cool at the time to be able to see so many many legendary queens back on TV for us to enjoy again. Especially since after All Stars 1, we wouldn't get another All Stars season for 4 years. Despite all this, I still think that All Stars 1 is a must watch season for newer fans of the show, because it set the base for what future seasons would look like. Or at least watch the first 2 episodes of Untucked. Before we end this video, thank you to AtlasVPN for sponsoring. Also please remember to click the link in the description to get your subscription to AtlasVPN. I wanted to take a moment to thank my patrons. In the Elite Pink Squad, we have Matthew Burns, Gay Uncle, and Wendell Norris Realtor. And in the Green Squad, we have The Only Sean, O Nicole, Edgar Allan Pup, Franny Fishsticks, Tamin Ritter Fury, Emma Malander, and Azure. If you'd like to see your name on the screen, you can support me on Patreon. The link will be in the description. Anyways, thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on Twitter at GreenGayYT, and I'll see you guys next year.